Today we'll be constructing a 200 square foot greenhouse that only cost us $250. The entire thing only took an hour and a half to set up. We'll be filling it up with our seedlings and showing you all our unique process for creating our own potting soil. And lastly, we'll be constructing raised beds and going over why you want to set them up now during fall time instead of spring. Then at the end of the video, there'll be a sneak peek of the cabin arriving. It was kind of scary. We decided to start on the greenhouse first. The package came with the greenhouse sleeve and all the framing to hold it into place. We then save all the cardboard to help us start fires in the future. We first laid out all the framing into the rough greenhouse shape. We then connected each frame piece with bolts and tightened it up. With the foundation frame being done, we could then move on to the vertical post, and then add in the supporting cross beams. It took about 45 minutes to add all the vertical post in. Once this stage was completed, we could then start on the overhead support hoops. This stage definitely requires at least two people, as the first person needs to hold the hoop into place, and the second person needs to tighten everything up. Once all five support hoops are in place, you'll set up three support beams that span the length of the greenhouse. You can see that there's some pretty bad warping right now, but once we implement all three of these support beams, all the warping will go away. And lastly for the frame, we'll make sure everything's nice and tight. With the frame being completed, we can now move it to exactly where we want, which for us will be over our methane digester, which Kimball will explain. So the greenhouse gives us a lot of benefits for this off-grid build. The biggest benefit here in October is it allows us to operate the methane digester. Without the added heat increase, the methane digester likely would not activate. It could be pretty cool outdoors, but here in the greenhouse, we're consistently getting temps into the 60s, 70s, sometimes 80s, even in October. The greenhouse can easily raise the temperature by 10 degrees, sometimes as much as 20 degrees or more from the outside temp. Beyond that, the greenhouse gives us a great spot for starting seedlings of more cool weather plants that we're looking to replant into our grow bags or the raised beds. Beyond that, we could even take this greenhouse and if we wanted to, abut it next to the mini cabin. Greenhouses can act as a solarium to give you more warm air during the winter time. That's a big miss that we have here in the US in particular. We don't take advantage of solariums or passive heating with our homes. So the greenhouse has many different functions from warming the methane digester, helping us start seeds giving us a good spot for some storage that we need before the micro cabin is delivered, and just giving us more warmer temps as we're working outdoors. The last stage of the greenhouse is implementing the sleeve, which was really fun and really easy. With the greenhouse being fully set up, we can now move on to the seedlings. Once we have one of our tables set up, we can then start on the potting soil process. We'll first drive over to our urban land lab and pick up some compost from our older compost piles. We only need about one bucket's worth for seedlings, but you can never have too much compost, so we might as well get a few other buckets while we're here. Once we have all the compost we need, we'll then pick up our sifter, which is a wooden frame with fine fencing mesh. The reason we make our own potting soil is just because it's more affordable. Now that we have everything we need, we can head on back and start on the potting soil process. The first thing we'll do is put our sifter over our wagon. Then we'll open up all the buckets and start to pour the compost onto the sifter. We first use a shovel to break up all the big pieces of compost, then we switch to our hands. This gives us more control over the process and it allows us to save any earthworms that may have fallen in from the buckets. Now all the soil that's gone through the sifter is aerated and fluffy. We like to use the seed cells and seed trays from Epic Gardening because they don't use the flimsy plastic but are really sturdy plastic that will last a lifetime. And then we always use botanical interest seeds because they're heirloom and they never come with any duds in them. Now that we have all of our seed cells set up and the methane digester getting the warmth that it needs, our greenhouse is now complete. Before we start on the raised beds, we need to go get some concrete pavers which are going to be used as a foundation for the micro cabin which will arrive later today. It's the Home Depot. We're currently looking for cinder blocks in Home Depot. I, in a past life, I designed software for the Home Depot maps. I can't find the cinder blocks in Home Depot. I'm gonna pull up their mobile app and see if I can locate the blocks, but it's just kind of funny because I used to work on the mapping systems and I can't find the blocks here. After searching the store for like 20 minutes, we finally realized that the blocks were actually right outside, right where we parked. It was kind of embarrassing. We then moved the IBC totes so that way we could put the raised beds next to the greenhouse. The only issue was one of them was still full. Kimball wasn't there at this time and it's gonna take hours for all the water to come out of the faucet. We had to flip it over to make it fast. But luckily my brother-in-law was there, who's a lot stronger than Ben and I. Because the water would soon stop draining because the hole being in the middle, we had to flip it one more time, then put blocks underneath it, which was pretty hard. 
With the IPC tanks being out of the way, we could now start on the raised beds. Even though we're months away from the spring and summer growing season, we've gone ahead and set up our bigger raised beds because it's gonna take some time to fill them up. We're gonna need to be taking logs, leaves, grass clippings, all types of bulk and biomass to cover up the first few feet on these tall raised beds. We get our tall raised beds set up first so we can bulk them up on the bottom, then cover the top half with richer soil, compost, biochar. That way we save money because good quality soil costs a lot of money, takes time to build. The IBC tanks behind me are gonna be used for garden water and chicken water. We'll be getting some fresh, super clean food grade IBC tanks for the drinking water that we capture using the rainwater collection system. No matter how you use your IBC tanks or your cisterns, you always want food grade. Even if the water's for your chickens, for your garden, you never want any toxins leached into the walls of your cisterns or IBC food grade tanks. So the tanks behind me will be used primarily for the garden and for the chickens, but we still want those tanks just as clean as if we were buying the tanks for our potable water needs. The raised beds we use are from Epic Gardening. We've used their raised beds for years, even before we partnered with them on this series. They also sent us our own discount code for you all to use. If you use all five at the checkout, you can get your raised beds 5% off. About an hour after we finished the raised beds, the micro cabin arrived, and it was pretty epic how we got it off the trailer. The next episode will show more of a lengthy detailed breakdown of how we got this shed off this trailer. In all, it took over an hour, but overall it was super cool getting to see this process, and in the next episode you'll see how he uses a mule to get the shed to where it needs to go.